So, we will talk about applying the scientific principles of solidification and what you learned about feeder shapes and capacity and efficiency to this lesson. Here we will talk about again what we really want to achieve by feeder design, but how do we achieve that by proper sizing and shaping and the uh, and, and connecting the feeder to the caster here. And we will also go back and look at capacity efficiency once more again to see how it is affecting my feedability. So, this we have seen last time and now we start putting parameters which affect each of those five, five rules. Okay. First rule was no hot spot in the casting. How do I take care of that? I take care of that by doing the right feeder shape and right feeder size. Okay. So, I have a hot spot in the feeder now. Instead of hot spot in the casting, if I make a feeder large enough, I have a hot spot in the feeder, but that is not guaranteed enough. I have to go to rule number 2 which says that the feed metal should be able to flow from the feeder to the hot spot in the casting, which means the feed path should be good. And how do we control that? I control that by the right position or location of the feeder and the right size of the feeder neck. Okay. This is two second parameter. Third I said is we want to have proper cooling, not too fast cooling which is bad. I want to have controlled cooling rate. How do I control my cooling rates in different parts of the casting? The combination of feed aids. And we look at entire feed aids in a separate lesson after this. We look at only feeder size and shape in this part. What about the other two we talked about? We said efficiency and yield that we can already control. We know how to control by connecting the same number of feeders per casting and number of castings per feeder. You have two kinds. So, you can have one feeder connected to multiple castings which you have seen, but also one casting may need multiple feeders. And how do you minimize that number of feeders? That combination will give us the best feeding efficiency and yield combination. So, we we'll look at that and I will also show you some examples to illustrate some of these points. First, let us look at the feeder shape and how do you and here are some nice equations here which you can directly use in your foundries. Okay. And it is a nice comparison here. If you have a rectangular or a oval shape feeder, which is sometimes we have to use rectangular oval shape because of the nature of the casting or shape of the casting. And if I take diameter, uh, sorry, the depth of the depth means the horizontal depth of the feeder as 1.5 times the horizontal width of the feeder and height of the feeder as 1.5 times the, the, the depth. Okay. With that and I take some value of uh, diameter neck and, and, uh, and the height of the neck if I do that, I get the modulus value of a blind feeder as 0.15 times the diameter. So, if you know the diameter you can directly use the equation to find the modulus of that. And you already know how to calculate the modulus of the casting by breaking into sections. So, as long as feeder modulus is more than casting modulus, the first rule that hot spot should be in the feeder is satisfied. Okay. The same similar dimensions h by d is 1.5 times uh, sorry height is 1.5 times the diameter. For a cylindrical feeder, it equation is 0.2 times 0.21 times the diameter, which means the modulus of a cylindrical feeder is more than a rectangular feeder. If you go to a spherical top, it is even more, it goes up to 0.23 times the diameter okay. and height is here total height of the feeder. Total height of the feeder is h is 1.5 times the diameter. So, with this, so as you can see the spherical top feeder has a has a highest uh, possible amount of um, modulus. Of course, it could be blind or open. If it is an open feeder, then your heat transfer is taking place from the top of the feeder and in a sand casting steel or sand casting of even aluminum, there is a lot of heat transfer by radiation. So, modulus comes down by almost by one third. So, if you see your open feeder rectangular is only 0.1, your uh, cylindrical is 0.14 and spherical you cannot have open top. So, we have not even put the value there. Yeah. So, the modulus is always is a length, length unit because modulus is volume by area. Volume is centimeter cube, area is centimeter square. So, modulus higher the modulus, the more the cooling time. Cooling time if you remember is square of modulus. So, cooling time of this feeder will be that much and if your casting modulus is let us say 1 centimeter, feeder modulus is 2 centimeters, the solidification time of feeder is actually is 4 times the casting because it is time is square of that. What is? D n is the uh, diameter of the neck, <laughs> diameter of the neck and height of the neck. So, here we are assuming that is a good question. We are, when you are calculating this modulus, we are assuming that there is no heat transfer from the bottom of the feeder. 
it talks only from the sides and the top. Okay, so side feeders, these equations again hold good. You have modulus values for different values of side feeders, and again your value for a given number value of neck. But in general, neck you don't worry. You assume that the feeder bottom is the never uh, transmits heat, and if there is side feeder or side neck, even that you assume that the feeder neck uh, area is same as the bottom of the feeder. With that, you can have simplify your calculations for your feeder modulus. Okay, now it's important, so please pay attention. How do we actually calculate the feeder size in a scientific way? So, if you have a real life casting, you break it up into sections. Okay, and you calculate the volume and your uh, uh, surface area for each section. And finally, let us say in this case, the section A is your is a hottest area. So, your feeder modulus should be more than the casting modulus. There is a casting modulus, do not take the entire casting volume and do not take the entire casting surface area, it gives a wrong picture. Because finally, casting solidification time is nothing but same as the solidification time of the hot spot in the casting. When hot spot solidifies, we say casting has solidified. So, we look at only the area around the hot spot. Okay. So, the equation is solidification time of the feeder should be greater than solidification time of the casting or solidification time of the hot spot, which is same thing. How do we ensure that? because we have equation relating the sort time with the modulus. So, we say modulus of the feeder should be more than modulus of the casting, but greater than does not help me in calculation. So, I say modulus of the feeder should be k times casting modulus, where k is greater than 1 and this table gives us the starting values of k for different metals. This k value does not guarantee good feeders, it is only the starting point. Actual k value may be much more than what you see here. Why it should be much more, we will see again in a few points this lesson. So, how do you actually calculate? If you have complex shape, you break into simple shapes and when you calculate the modulus of each shape, let us say A here, the dotted line between A and B, you should not calculate for cooling surface area. Area of A is only the all the area in contact with the mold, not contact with the other part of the casting. So, modulus is to be calculated carefully. Now, there is a complaint from foundries. They say that Okay, with this equation when we apply, we do not get good quality castings. They say, no, we followed the textbook properly, we calculated modulus properly, we applied factor of k, we applied k 1.3, very safe, 30 percent more, still we are getting a defect in the casting. Okay, that is a common complaint from foundries. The answer is this and let us do a simple example where people are going wrong in this. What is happening is, let us say for this particular casting, the volume of A region is 100 centimeters, volume of B is 45 centimeters, C is 30 centimeters. Let us say cooling area, when I say area, I mean cooling area in contact with the mold for A is 31, B is 15, C is 13. So, if you do modulus is volume by area, you get 3.3 for A, 3 for B and 2.3 for C. So, which is cooling first? C is cooling first and C is fed by B and A cools last, so A feeds B. So, if you want to feed A, I need to have a modulus of feeder which is greater than 3.3. I do that. So, I say modulus feeder should be at let us say 30, 1.2 times 20 percent safety margin. So, I say 3.3 into 1.2, I get 4 centimeter. Now, I can assume a h by d ratio of the feeder. So, I can I know from my previous equation, my modulus area by volume, I can calculate the diameter of the feeder and height of the feeder. What I said before? With these values, if you go and feed the make the casting, you get a defective casting. So, what went wrong? Anyone can tell me? That is one check, that is one check. But even with this basic calculation, something has gone wrong, fundamentally gone wrong. Okay. Anyone wants to try? Students? Okay, exactly. Okay. So, what has done is the moment I put a feeder to the casting that area of A, portion A is no longer available for cooling. There is no more mold in contact with that. There is a neck, there is a hot neck in contact with that. So, my area of A now reduces to 26. Earlier it was 33, now it is 26. So, modulus increases to now 3.8. So, with this modulus when I recalculate, I now find that my diameter and height have increased. This is what you should do. Of course, with this increased diameter and height, my neck area also increased slightly. So, should I do one more round of calculation? Not necessary. That increase will be minor. 
that increase will be. So, if you do one round of iteration, it is good enough and you will start getting by calculation you start getting better fluid designs and no defect in the castings. Is this point clear? Okay. Why there is a mistake? You have to account for the connection of the feeder to the casting and thereby reduction in the cooling area of the casting. Now, how do we know feeder size is actually right? Calculation does not guarantee that, it only is starting point. End of the day, I have to actually put thermocouples or simulate the casting and find that is my hotspot shifting to the feeder and also feed path available from feeder to the casting. If feed path is not available, no matter how big a casting a feeder I put, if it is put somewhere, imagine the same feeder put on the right side is not going to help. The feeder putting on the right side is not going to help because my feed path is not going to be taken care of. Now, there is one small guideline here when you calculate the cooling area, if you are going to do by hand calculations. If you have a inner area, let us say you have a uh, cylindrical casting, hollow casting, the cooling area from outside is fine, but cooling area from inside sometimes you have to worry about. If it is a large cylindrical casting with a thin wall, then I am okay, you can take cooling area both from inside and outside. But if you have a thicker as a thinner core which means a thick section okay the cooling area comes down in fact if you see the last uh, example here if the diameter inner diameter small d is less than half of the bigger d then the core is so hot it doesn't do any heat transfer at all so you should not take the cooling area of the inner portion in general any inner portion and that gives us a trick to where we can use for advantage whenever you have a neck the area around the neck is always hot because neck is an undercut. Your feeder on one side, casting on one side. So, area around the neck becomes very hot. So, you do not actually need as big neck as you calculate. Usually what we do, we say feeder modulus is let us say x and sorry, casting modulus is x and you say feeder modulus is 1.2 x. Then the neck modulus is should be in between to make sure feed path is right, which is 1.1 x. But actual feeder modulus, you know, because it is hotter than what it is, you can make a smaller neck. And that trick is also used in what is called as a notch neck. What is the beauty of notch neck? The notch in the neck is, is so hot, the area in that notch is so hot because it is like metal all around the notch. So, feeding takes place happily because there is no obstruction to that. But when you fettle the casting, it is beautiful, it is very easy to fettle it and fettling cost is significant, you know, and you reduce it significantly. So, you take care of that this principle the, to advantage. So, sometimes these principles are can be used for advantage in a foundry to improve quality or reduce cost. Now, we will come to the a critical part of neck uh, feeder which is neck design. What you find is in most of the places the feeder design is well done okay? and then you still see a problem in the casting and that is partly because of neck and neck, neck is a very sensitive creature little bit of oversizing of neck, undersizing of neck can create problems in casting for you. And I will give you example here in a simple example. This is a good neck design. So, feeder, feeder is hotter than the casting, rule number 1 is taken care of, neck connection also is good, feed path is nice from feeder to hot, neck to hot water in the casting, perfect. Now, look at this. What you see here is a hot spot is extending from the feeder into the neck and partially into the casting. Many times you see what is called as under neck porosity, right. Under, when you say under neck, it is not necessarily top feeder, even side feeder is next to neck porosity. The porosity is extending from feeder to neck to casting also and it is not just, you know we can say pipe, but it is like a pipe or a porosity. Whenever that happens, you know that immediately the neck is oversized, that is an oversized neck. Then you have the third classical case where you see porosity in the feeder porosity in the casting also and neck is very clean. Then you know it is the reverse of that, neck is undersized. So, moment you see picture of that porosity in feeder and porter, porosity in casting, neck is very clean, you increase the neck size. Okay. Porosity is happening between feeder and neck and casting also, reduce the neck size. But remember do it in a small steps because the neck is a very, very sensitive thing. And the neck distance between neck uh, feeder and casting also is sensitive because the heat transfer around the neck accumulation depends on how thin the wall between the feeder and casting is. 
the mold wall. So you need to control both carefully. Okay. So we mentioned earlier that the effective modulus of the neck is more than the actual modulus, geometric modulus because of the heating around the neck. Now there is an exception to the rule. You have things like uh, metals like grey iron and ductile iron where you have in between graphitization happening. During graphitization casting is expanding and, it's a and not all casting expanding, part of casting expanding, part is still liquid. So when rest of the casting expanding, especially thinner portions are expanding because they are solidified and they are going for graphitization. They will put pressure on the hotter part of casting and usually hotter parts are connected to the feeder. So the metal may flow from the casting to the feeder which is reverse, which you do not want that. Okay. Grey iron people must be having this problem, right? especially high grade grey irons, even low grade ductile irons, you have these problems. Okay. So what you need to do in that case is, neck has to be even more undersized. Already remember that neck has to be slightly undersized because of the heating around the neck. In case of grey iron and ductile iron, you undersize the neck even more, so that initially the casting is fed by the feeder through the neck. But when the casting starts expanding at some stage, you want to prevent the reverse feeding and the neck should freeze off little early. So it is the neck modulus typically in this case could be as much as, as low as, same as hotspot, casting hotspot modulus or even less than that, maybe 0.9 times that to prevent reverse feeding of the neck. And then feeding distance, you know from uh, books that uh, end effect is 2.5 times T the feeder effect is 2.5 T. So if you put a central feeder in the casting, you can feed a total length of plate of 4.5 plus 4.5 plus D, diameter of the feeder. So maximum length of casting which can be fed from a single central riser is that much. Okay. And then you can extend it by putting chills, but we will look at this later in a separate section, how do you design those feed aids. And there is one exercise here which I want you to think about it. In this example, there are uh, three feeders. There is one top feeder somewhere on the top, then you have two spherical feeders, blind feeders. One of them has a core, the, the vertical line blank is a core, another one does not have a core. So you should be able to figure out from this picture which feeders work well, which do not work well. The top feeder which gets a beautiful pipe definitely works very well because it is big enough and it is uh, connected to a thick section and the pressure feeding takes care of that nicely. The one with the core also works well because there is no, a blind feeder what happens is, uh, the, as the feeder is uh, solidifying itself, you have vacuum in the feeder itself. So if vacuum is created in the feeder, then it won't be able to feed the casting. So you need to connect it to the atmosphere. That is very important in a blind feeder. Second blind feeder does not work very well, because it is not connected to the atmosphere. And so in that section 8, between section 8 and section 6, you may get a big shrinkage cavity area, porosity area. So you should be able to evaluate different feeders by looking at the configuration, location, size, shape and then whether it is, if it is blind, is it open to atmosphere or not. <coughs> okay. So to summarize this, what we looked at is, we, we have to make sure that the most important criterion is feeder sizing also we can do, but directional feeding from feeder to neck to casting is one which is difficult to get it right. And one of those critical creatures is neck. And getting the neck diameter and length right is not easy. FG iron in a, in a in ductile iron, you have to make sure that reverse feeding also is taken care of by the neck size here. 